Okay, welcome to this DAT power tutorial. In this video, we are going to do a real quick run through of how to post a load on DAT. And now it's pretty quite simple and it's very straightforward. So this is gonna be what your home screen looks like if you are subscribed to DAT power. If you're not subscribed yet, if you look at the description in my bio here, you will see a link. If you go to that link and sign up through that page, you can actually get one whole free month of this amazing software if you are a new subscriber, right? So if you are brand new to DAT, you've never had an account before, you can sign up through my link and the first month is going to be on me so that you can try it out. And just a disclosure, we do get a small commission for referring our customers, but we use that commission to make videos just like this so that we can keep giving back to the freight broker, carrier, and just logistics community in general. So let's get right into how to post a load on DAT Power. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna navigate to your home screen after you use your DAT login. You're gonna go up here and click Post Loads. Once that page loads up, we're gonna see a few different options. So once this page loads up, we're going to see a bunch of different stuff. The bottom is where available trucks are going to appear, right? And we're gonna see that in one second once I get through with this load post. You can see here on the top, all of the loads that you have actively posted. You can see here, we're working on a load from New Jersey to Columbus, Ohio. That's actually unposted right now, so it's probably covered, but we leave it there just in case something happens with the truck that we assigned to it. Um, and again, Carriers can't see this right now because it's unposted. So let's get right into how do you post a new load. The first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna click this green button right here that says new load post, and it's going to open up all of these different options that you could type into. Very straightforward, we're gonna start and go from left to right, and then we're gonna go to the bottom. So let's start from up here and see what information that they ask for. The first thing is going to be the pickup date. And now just because I don't want people calling in the office right now, I'm going to make the pickup date 10:29. Right here is going to be the time that it picks up. So I know that it has to pick up between 8 and 3 p.m. Okay, so we're going to put that in there. The more information you could give carriers about your load posting, the better it's going to be and the better results that you're going to get when you post these loads. The next thing is going to be the origin. Now it already pre-filled to Houston, so let's pretend that the load that I'm working on is starting out in Houston, Texas, and going to Detroit, Michigan. All right, if it was any other cities, you can just go in here and type in any zip code, 7601, and let's see what it gives us, Hackensack, New Jersey. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. This is where you put in your origin, and this is where you put in your destination. You can see a little handy tool right here, is it tells you how many miles there are. Just a quick note, uh, if you're a newer broker, you're always going to want to know the miles off the top of your head. It's one of the first questions that carriers and dispatchers are going to ask you when they call off your load. So working from left to right, we can see here there's dock hours. Now this pertains to the destination, right? So we know that they're going to unload between 8 and 3 p.m. We're going to put that in there. The next is going to be the type of truck that you want. You can see here DAT has a full list of just about every single type of truck that you'll ever need. For this particular one, we're just going to type a typical van, right? But you see here, you can type Conestogas, containers, flatbeds, air ride flatbeds, hazmat flatbed, right? There's a bunch of combinations of equipment that you can choose from, and it's easiest just to pick the one that you need, which is, in this case, gonna be van. Next, F slash P. All this means is, is this a full or a partial load? Very easy. If it's not a partial, it's going to be a full load. So you see we have that selected. The next is going to be the length. Now this pertains to the length of the truck that your load is going to take up. If you don't know, you can just type 53. But if you know that it's not a very big load, you can type something like 16 because carriers know if they have a 26 foot truck, they can call on your shipment and you could potentially get a better rate because you're using a smaller truck, right? Because it costs less to run a smaller truck. So sometimes the rates are a little bit better in that instance. So for this particular one, we're just gonna type 53 because we know that our load is gonna take up a full truck load and we need all 53 feet of the truck. The next is going to be the weight, uh, the max legal weight. 
Um, we're we're going to come in a little under that. We know it's 40,000 pounds. And now the offer rate. Now, it's up to you whether you want to include an offer rate. At my brokerage, we do not. Uh, there's a bunch of reasons why, but we typically don't put in an offer rate. The reason is because we want people calling in and we want to be able to negotiate with them and we don't want to shut out people just in case our rate is too low or get people excited if it's too high. Right? We want to have a conversation with that and decide on something that's beneficial to both us as a broker and the carriers that call in. But you can see here, you can just put in a rate a per mile rate, whatever it is, okay? Now, before everybody starts saying, oh, Detroit to Hackensack, that's not $3,000. I know, it, it, this is just a regular number, so. Uh, reference ID, if you have multiple dispatchers sitting in your office, you're gonna wanna fill out the reference ID, just so that when they call in, they know to call and say, I'm calling on load one, and you can forward them to the appropriate person. If you're the only one taking these calls, you might not need to include that. So let's just leave that blank. Contact, you always wanna verify that the contact information is correct. If it's not, just give DAT a call and they will put the correct phone number in. Uh, you can see here, you can choose from your email address or any other number. Before we get into this little information on the right here, these are the comment sections. Now, this allows you to put in comments about the load. Like for example, if the driver needs to assist with loading to tail, that's where you can put something like that. Or if they need load bars, load bars required. Right, you could put all of that kind of information right here in the comments section. Same thing goes for comments too. And for commodity, we just wanna let the carriers know exactly what it is they're gonna be hauling. Every driver needs to know exactly what's going into their truck. It's a matter of safety and transparency. So you always wanna put the commodity because some drivers have preferences to which commodities that they like to haul, okay? So in this case, we're just gonna type, uh, you know, steel, let's use the example there, steel coils. Um, steel coils are actually a very dangerous type of cargo, but just for the example. Now, you'll notice here that a little box popped up called the broker to carrier spot. What this is, is this is an amazing feature by DAT, and this compiles all of the verifiable data that they have of active loads being covered. It gives you an average price of what that lane is going for based off of regions, supply and demand, uh, loads accepted by carriers, all of that great stuff. So these are typically very accurate. Now, of course, there are times where it's not very accurate. So don't use this as law, but this is a very good way to start your negotiations because you know on the low end, brokers are paying about 225 a mile. On the high end, you can expect to see 251 a mile and the average is just around 240, all right? So that's how you read that tool. After you have everything entered, all you have to do is press this post button right here and you can see that here below where there was nothing before, now there are a bunch of carriers that showed up. Now let's go through this little section right here real quick. Here, from left to right, this is the age that the carrier has had their truck posted. We could see here, this has been here for 29 hours, so it's very unlikely that this truck is still available. So we would skip over this one. We could sort this by age, okay? So that's the oldest, and we can see the newest truck right here was posted about a minute ago. Next is the available date. What date is this truck available? Now remember, our load was posted for 1029. This truck is also available for 1029. So that's a good match for this truck, this load. Next is the type of truck that they have registered. This is a van, full or partial load. They're looking for a full load. DH-O, this stands for deadhead miles to the origin. What this number means is this is the amount of miles that the driver is going to have to drive in order to pick up the load. We can see here, this example, this driver is in Allentown, PA. My load is theoretically picking up in Hackensack, New Jersey. That means that this driver is gonna have to drive 98 miles to pick up my load. His rate or her rate might be a little bit more expensive because they have 100 miles that they have to drive completely empty. All right, so you could keep that in mind with your negotiations. If you negotiate with carriers who are very close, like this one, who's only 30 miles away, you can typically get better margins and rates. Next here is the destination. This gives you an idea of where the trucks want to drive. Uh, you could see here, this driver specifically wants to go from New Jersey to Michigan, and you can see that their home base is based out of Michigan. So this would be a good truck to call for this load. 
Next, you can see the deadhead to the destination. You typically don't see any information in this column and you can disregard it in most cases. Next, you're gonna see the company name. Now, this is the name of the company that has their truck posted so that you can click on that. I'll just show you real quick. And you can see a little bit of information like their MC number and all that stuff. Next is the contact information. They're either going to have a phone number or an email address. If they have a phone number, it's better to call them. If they have an email address, it's better to send them an email. This is their preferred method of contact, and that is of the truck. Next is just gonna be the length. Remember, we put 53 foot up here in our description and the max weight that they're willing to haul. You can see this truck here is willing to haul 45,000 pounds. This one, 40, 44, and you can see how it works from there. Back up to our load post that we just did. We're going to refresh the screen real quick. And once this loads, you're gonna see that the new load that we just posted has been broadcasted to the entire DAT power network. So anybody who's looking for loads in this area is going to be able to call on them. Now you can see right here, here's our new load that we just posted. We can see the age is four seconds and we can see all of the information about our load, who posted it, all of that good stuff. Now because I don't want anybody calling on this load because it's not real, we're going to immediately unpost that load, and now nobody else on the load boards can see it. What we're gonna do here is we're just going to delete this right here, and that is how you post a load on DAT, and those are all the features that are included when you do so. I hope this video helped, and until the next one, I will see you soon.